there, little guy. How you guys doing? Oh, that's a fight! Fight! Start off with a fight here. Here you go. Have some cabbage. Yeah. Hey, everybody. I am on Okonoshima, otherwise known as Rabbit Island. See, sometimes they're just not hungry. Would you want some here? Oh, you're so cute. I'm going to go talk to some of your brothers and sisters now. Sometimes the rabbits just aren't hungry here. This is my third time on Okonoshima this year. And I've been filming uh, for the main channel an edited video to get a better understanding about what makes this island special. I know a lot of other YouTubers have done it, but nobody's really explained like who takes care of these rabbits? Where do they really come from? And um, what is the connection to, you know, it's, it's dark, deep past of World War II. Yeah, we kind of know a little bit about that, but I was just talking with some of the rangers in there and you know what, I, I kind of dive deep in my main channel episodes. Uh, the foreign media kind of has a lot of the facts wrong about the island. In fact, a lot of people don't even know that, including people um, in Japan. So it's kind of an important episode, I think, to make this with the staff here on the, for the rangers here on this national park. Yeah. But you can see, oh no, they're coming after me now. The last time I was here, they, they were um, not as many. Actually, the last time I was here was with Leo, and he was way too young to be... Oh, stop following me, stalker. I kind of want you to follow me. I've got cabbage. But the question that I received from a couple of people were, like, is this a really touristy island? Is this is the place where, um, you know, like a theme park? And the answer is, not really. I wouldn't call this a theme park. It's more like, it's a weird place. It's a weird place because the rabbits here are very tame and yet they're wild. They live in holes all around here. But, oh, if you just get, get close, they come after you. Hey, I don't, you know what? I got some here. Okay, okay, all right, all right, you got it here. This is brought to you by Brandania. In the spirit of Brandonimus. Brandonimus. <laughs> there you go. Let's go find some more rabbits. No, it, you know, it doesn't feel like a tourist attraction, but yet it, it sort of is. I don't know, it's really hard to explain. And I think that's kind of... You know, and the longer I stay here, I, the more I kind of realize that's sort of its problem. Um, Rabbit Island, or Okonoshima, it has the image, especially internationally, as being something of a theme park, like a like a rabbit pet cafe that's an entire island. But that's so far from the truth. This is an actual um, national park with very few staff members to take care, to clean up the trash. They're, they just don't have the kind of budget that a theme park has or the volunteers or the staff to, to maintain it all. So the more popular that this island becomes and the more tourists that come here, the more issues and problems that they have and the more I talk about it with the staff, the more I think I can do a lot of good with this with this episode on Rabbit Island because my gosh, um, I don't know, YouTubers, I don't know why they don't just contact the office and try to get somebody to, to give them more insight and understanding into the island. They said that no YouTubers had ever contacted them before, which I find hard to believe considering how popular this place is. I don't know, I just find that really, like what? A little bit of autumn foliage is still around the island here. It is quite beautiful. So are the rabbits, but I know another hiding place where they are. It is really cold this morning. I was up around 6, 6.30. I was outside filming the uh, opening or one of the scenes and it started, to, this white stuff came from the sky. I thought it was sand. It actually was um, snow. It was snowing here this morning. It's crazy. Yeah, I, I guess, I don't know why YouTubers don't, don't I, again, like, I'm not going to, complaining about it, but I always think that YouTubers, if, if you just contacted in advance, the story gets, like, way, way better. Right? So, we've got a pretty darn good story here. One of the questions that people have been asking is, who takes care of these rabbits? And I found a couple of volunteers who do that, and was able to follow them this morning. Well, that rabbit came out of nowhere. He just, just came.
came out of nowhere. Where are you from? Came out of that bush. There aren't a lot of visitors in the winter, and yet winter is the uh, best time to visit because it's too hot in the summer. The rabbits don't want to come out at all. In the fall, eh, you know, it's, it's okay, but in the winter, it's cold and there's not a lot of food, so they, they come out to try to get more of it. And you can see they're eating, um, what is that? Like a carrot here. That's kind of a big chunk of carrot. There you go. One of the issues that I've been hearing from the staff is that people leave behind the food. So when they're done with it, when they're done with the food, they just dump it all out at the port and that's creating a huge problem. And the staff is actually, um, when I went around walking around the island with them, for, for people who dumped the food on the ground, they would pick it up and throw it away not good to leave food by the roadside too because then the rabbits get hit by the bus and the cars if they're staying sitting there it just creates a lot of little problems for them it is a beautiful island isn't it and this is what i love about hiroshima prefecture in general so the seto inland sea is one of the most beautiful spots i guess if peter is watching he would agree with me on this it is just so scenic and it's so peaceful i don't know why i ever i guess i do I, I, I used to live in Hiroshima in a little town called Yohogawa inside of the center of Hiroshima city. Um, and it was so easy and so nice to live. The food was good, the people were friendly. And then I left and, went to, and moved to Tokyo. I don't, don't know. Um, I guess if, if there was more work in Hiroshima, I probably would build a house here. I really love this prefecture. And by the way, the tower here, you see these electrical tire towers here? That one in the distance is the highest electrical tower in Japan. So, hey, there's something more than just bunnies. There's actual, actual, the highest uh, electrical tower in Japan that's right there. That's something. <laughs> that's something, baby. Oh yeah. Oh, look at that, the Prime app did an update. It's doing like this white flash. It is so cold. It's windy. Typical island day. So you can see here the uh, uh, bunnies. They they just kind of will come out. If you just walk there, they'll come out and investigate, and they move quickly, and then they move away. Rabbits are so friendly, you know. And there are some rules to this island. One of them is, if you're feeding them, don't get your fingers nearby because. Rabbits have really bad eyesight. They don't see like we see. They see like, like it's all blurry, like somebody put toothpaste in your eye or something. And that's what they see. So yeah, you, you, you basically had better watch out because they might nip your finger by mistake. And that was one of the worries when my son Leo came here last week that he, he did get nipped a little bit and he was crying. Didn't break the skin or anything, but it was scary for us as parents. Like, oh crap, we are bad parents. We let a rabbit bite our, bite the, uh, kid but it, it happens a lot you just have to be really careful um, that's kind of a big chunk of, of carrot what they love the most is cabbage I, I saw and greens that's way too big you have to be careful people don't know though and that's one of the issues and that is the biggest challenge of rabbit island this is not a theme park it's a national park but they have a hard problem hard time explaining the rules and then kind of, like, nobody will check to make sure you're not doing anything wrong. You have to self-police, I guess. But the rangers will... Oh, hey, hey, how you doing, little guy? How you doing? You want some cabbage? I got a little bit for you. I'm standing in all of your poo. Is that what that is? I thought this was rocks! Oh, I'm like in a big pile of poop! Ugh. Ah! Oh! How am I gonna get that off my shoes? Have some cabbage too, sir. Have some cabbage, just a little. Help you grow and have nice fur. Cabbage, good. Oh, look how happy he is with that cabbage. Oh, look at that. He's so happy. You like my cabbage? Cabbage, good, isn't it? 
he didn't, he couldn't even see that I was I'd moved away. Well, your eyesight is bad. How old are you? You need glasses. Sorry. Oh, there you are. I'm I gotta find you. Here you go. Look at this rabbit standing up on his hind legs. All right, here you go. Hold on. I get to stand up, stand up, stand up, stand up, everybody. Stand up, stand up, and can wow. Oh, that was good. Let's see some of your little thumper friends here. So, is it a tourist attraction? I think some people want to make it into such, and then some people, some people don't. And you have to be respectful of those that don't, and you have to, or you can take one of these here. I don't want to give a big piece, because that's, oh my gosh. I like, all right, okay, okay, okay. Back, hey, dude, chill. Ah, ah. Don't go there. Got some more here. They're gangsters. Oh my gosh. Okay. Back away. So that, that, that is going to be the biggest issue. And if this place gets more popular, there's going to be people who want to create this into a tourist attraction because there's money to be made. And there's going to be both people who want to preserve it as a national park and really make sure that the rules are, are strict and adhered to. And I think the perfect answer is maybe somewhere in the middle and, and a balance of it. There's only one yokan on the island, which is a traditional Japanese inn. It's an old one, but it's actually nice. I've always had a good stay. This is the second time, third time I stayed there. One time at the camping spot that's run by the, the traditional Japanese inn. And, uh, the two times inside of the, the yokan because it's just still too cold to camp, although there are campers here, which is crazy. Um, but I think the answer is, if, if, is it a tourist trap? No, it's still a national park and it's still a natural place. And there's not hawks and, you know, people trying to sell you stuff all the time. Uh, at the port, there's the place where you get tickets, but they do sell souvenirs and stuff. But actually the money that they make from this, I, I see that they've invested and put back into making sure that you get the information about Rabbit Island, which is actually a good thing, uh, protecting the rules and whatnot. So there is a balance between, um, the business aspect of it, where they do want to get tourists to come to Hiroshima Prefecture and attract people here, but also the idea that we want to educate and make sure that tourists who do visit do the right thing and make sure that they're, um, you know, not not bringing like cookies and stuff, hot dogs, things like this. This is really bad. Um, there's the bus. There's a bus that'll take you back and forth from the the, the uh, hotel to the pier. And uh, that runs basically when the boat runs. And let's go. Let's go say hi to these rabbits over here, and then we're gonna do it. So I, I'll be really curious to see in five years how Rabbit Island is doing. But since tourism has just restarted, I think it's it's kind of a priority to get people to understand what's going on. Whether or not to feed the rabbits, I guess it's up to each person. But if you do, maybe don't do that. That's too much. That's not good. I'm not a policeman. I'm not going to tell you what to do, but that's way too much. Yeah, you shouldn't be doing that. You have to protect, kind of protect the rules here. They're going to be full. And don't leave any, any uh, food behind. Doesn't smell bad, Ada. You know, the rabbit poop doesn't have a bad smell. It doesn't have a good smell. But I did notice that when I got to my hotel room, this is really good to point out. When you get to your hotel room, make sure you take off your shoes. In fact, I'm still kind of confused in why Westerners still walk inside their house with their shoes on. Do you know what's on the bottom of your shoes? Oh my God, it's awful. And when I walked into the hotel, and I remember walking out, and uh, I said, I walked into the room and I, I remember I just kind of sniffed my shoes a little bit. It was not good. The bottom of it did have rabbit poo on it. You don't want that tracked into the, uh, you don't want that tracked into your house, right? Or the hotel rooms. And I worry that, that potentially there's a, you know, Westerners who do wear shoes inside the tatami rooms. That's just nasty, man. Um, you gotta make sure you have to make sure that you keep the rooms clean for the next people because that's just uh, 
That's, I don't know. I, I still don't know. I remember watching Seinfeld and Friends episodes back in the 1980s and I, or 1980s and 90s and, and 2000s. And I'd see them put their shoes on the sofa. They'd sit down and, and, and you know, like go, go sit on their bed with their shoes on and stuff. And after living in Japan for so long, I'm just shocked. In fact, if, if I go into a house in the U.S., if somebody invites me in and they say, oh, no, you can keep your shoes on, you better believe I'm going to keep my shoes on because my, I'm guessing that their floor is filthy. <laughs> I don't want to say anything to be rude. But after living in Japan, I just don't understand why people don't take off in the West their shoes off when they go inside. Is this like a cowboy thing that goes back? I don't know anymore. I can't not take off my, my shoes. I just feel bad. Hey guys, I got some cabbage, but you gotta share it. Hey, you gotta share it with your friends. A little bit at a time. A little bit goes a long way. A little bit goes a long way. A little bit goes a long way. There you go. All right. All right, now share some with your little buddy here. He's probably your enemy. Are you guys, are you guys enemies? Oh my God, they're all swarming. Mosh pit. What are you doing? You want to go through the camera and go live with Brandania? You want to go? You want to go to the, go to the Philippines, live with Joy? <laughs> we can we can arrange that. I also one of the things I'm going to go back now to the visitor center, which is closed on Wednesdays and Thursdays, by the way. Um, there's there have been cases where rabbits were so cute that they were kidnapped off of the island and people try to take them home because they're super cute. I can understand that. You know, you think you can take them and say, oh, I've got a nice warm house and they can have food every day. That's not the case. They want to be here with their family. They actually like being free on the island. They're not in a zoo. This is the perfect ideal situation for a rabbit. You got an entire island. There's, there's very few enemies. There are crows and there are inoshishi, which are wild boars. And those are the only things that really, really are dangerous for the rabbits here. But WRX Turbo is in the house. Welcome to Rabbit Island. Very quick orientation. This is the camp spot here. This is the port number two where the ferry comes in most of the time. In, only in the morning does it come here to, to terminal number one. I'm here, and this is the information center and the gas museum. And then this is the ryokan of the traditional Japanese inn uh, right here. And you can walk along and all around the island. It takes about 45 minutes. It's about two kilometers around. And in the edited episode, I'm going to go up here to the top and the very top of the mountain. That's what I'm going to do after this after I interview uh, the ranger and talk about some of the challenges they have on the island. I'm going to uh, go to the top and and film that because we have a nice beautiful sunny sunny day the island is it's not huge like Miyajima is 10 times bigger but for rabbits it's pretty huge it feels huge I think if you're an animal lover like and I am this is a must visit because it's just such a weird place. You have these rabbits that are sort of wild, but sort of tame. They're not afraid. They, I guess they are tame. They're not afraid to come and, and say hi to you just like pet rabbits are. But also they, they're, not, they're not indoor rabbits. These rabbits are, you know, outside. So it is a very unique situation. 45 minutes doesn't sound huge. I walk fast. <laughs> I don't know. It's not that big, but it's not. It's not so small. Uh, 45 minutes is not that much time, but it is. It could be smaller. They, these are rabbit ears. I, I guess if you put your head in here, you can hear very well. Let's try it. Can't hear anything. I think you have to have somebody talking to you. What's up, Doc? Oh, 
yeah, there is a there are also cat islands here in Japan. Yeah, there's a lot of animal sanctuaries or, or parks like this. There's the foxes up in in um, uh, in Yamagata as well. So there, you know, there's the the bear park in Noboribetsu, which is kind of a sad area. That's where I met Toby. And then there's Rabbit Island. And it, this is always going to be a special place. Now, these rabbits aren't here because of the poison gas uh, experiments going on in 1929 and 1945. They're here because of four different reasons. And then you, we're not quite sure which one is the exact answer. It could be because of that. But it also could be because, um, you know, they wanted to make this a rabbit tourist attraction. <laughs> so they could have just released a bunch of rabbits here. That's probably the most... Um, the most uh, easy to understand answer but it's a nice place for kids and families to come and you do get a chance to see rabbits you can get some exercise and it's a nice day trip if you're in the area but definitely it's very far from Tokyo it takes about four and a half five hours to get here it's very hard as a day trip from Tokyo you kind of need to spend the night somewhere close maybe from Himeji or Hiroshima if you're in this area this this could be a day trip but it is and, and make sure you come in the morning because um, the, the time does fly by all right, everybody, thanks for watching. I'll be back. It I, I, depends if I have time. I might do another live stream because it, in um, uh, Fukuyama, there's a castle that I wanted to show you that's right next to the Shinkansen platform. But I'm not sure if I'm going to have time. Um, my focus right now, from the moment I stop this live stream, is to finish the main channel episode, which is what I'm going to do. So have a good day, everybody, from sunny but very, very chilly Okunoshima. I'll see you in another live stream. Back to Tokyo in, uh, I guess, in about five hours. I'll be heading back home. See ya. Here's the visitor center. That's where I'm gonna go uh, meet with, with uh, the ranger right now.